One of the mainstays of the roll stretch approach is passive backward bending over a firm surface. Now, now we prefer bending over something firm like this rather than a Swiss ball because, just think about it, if you've got a bit of a, a hump in your back and you put your spine on a Swiss ball, even if it's a relatively hard one, all that happens is the part of the back that you want to straighten just presses into the ball. That's problem number one. Problem number two, and in, in my view the more important of the problems, is Swiss balls are inherently unstable which makes them wonderful for certain repatterning and strengthening um, exercises, but it makes them, in my view at least anyway, hopeless for stretching over. We prefer something firm, something solid. We make these, and uh, one of our colleagues makes these, I should say, and you can get these from us, but anything uh, firm will do, the end of a couch in your house um, or something similar. Notice too that it's got an interesting shape in it. If you bend with your head here and the body here, the upper and middle back are intensely bent backwards, but if we do it this way, the other way, it's a less strong bend. And so that's the way we're going to do it today because we've got so much talking and explanation to do. And to that end, we've rolled up a second sticky mat here. And before Olivia comes in to be our lovely model, we're just going to put it in position so the back of her head is supported and the whole of her middle back will be supported as well. Olivia and I are going to demonstrate a one partner version of this passive backbend and the little details that we'll teach you in this sequence we have found make all the difference between normal passive backbending over a relatively firm surface and this version. That is to say that this one here is infinitely more comfortable and, and surprisingly even though more comfortable it's much more effective too. So watch the first thing. Uh, Olivia puts herself in position and look how she does it because we want everything to be done as safely as possible. She's supporting herself with her straight arms. She places roughly the shoulder blades on the highest part of the barrel or the whale I should say like this and she lowers her own head down onto the curved surface. Now it may be that you're not as flexible as she is so I've prepared a little cushion and a pillow here which we'll use to support just the back of her neck and her head and if you see the final position here, you'll see that this neck or her neck is hardly in extension at all and it simply feels safer to her and more comfortable in the neck, obviously. So the next thing that happens is that I put myself in position so that she can actually reach back and hold the back of my leg here because we're going to apply some traction to the arms using my body weight. So you help the person get into position like this and you can adjust your own position so that her fingers are linked or your partner's fingers are linked firmly just up underneath the buttocks there then watch you then move your knee away like this so that you've got a tiny amount of traction on the arms and then the second most important thing is just watch I'm grasping the whole of her arm muscles like this I grip the whole arm flesh which is biceps and triceps and all the fascia and I twist in firmly and then the last point is I then apply the traction by leaning my body back like this and then the instruction is simply to breathe and relax. Now Olivia then actually applies the stretch that she wants by simply lowering her hips like so and as you can see you can see that her middle and upper back is conforming itself to the shape of the barrel perfectly. That's the third part. Now the fourth part, and this is a very important part, is the whole breathing aspect. At the moment she's breathing into her abdominal area mostly, but we can change that completely. If you look at the top of her chest you'll see it's hardly moving at all. But if I release one arm and place my flat hand just below her chin on the top part of her chest like this, and then ask herself to breathe into the hand, look at how much the hand now moves. Now what's happening is that while the whole fascial sleeve is under stretch, fascial and muscle of course, is under stretch, now by directing her breathing action into the hand, all of these top and middle ribs are expanding hugely. And then the instruction is simply to keep breathing into where the hand was and then drop the hips lower and lower slowly until you get the full stretch that you want. Breathe and relax and the goal of this exercise is to stay in this position for a minute or two in your full stretch position trying to let your body simply relax over whatever curved or shaped curved surface you're lying on. Breathe and relax. I'm maintaining the traction and she's applying the stretch by lowering her hips. Now let's assume that you've been in the stretch for long enough. What's the best way to come out? Well this is the sequence that, that we have found is effective. Firstly you release the rotation like this. 
Then she unclasps her hands from behind my leg and reaches her fingers into the back of her head like this. And she lifts the head up away from the bench like this and then puts her hands in position to support herself and lets her bottom slide down to the floor. And immediately she then goes into a little forward bend. You see one that you like, Liv. What she's doing is she's doing the clasped leg version. And as you can see, as she slumps, the part of the back that was being bent backwards most strongly, and this is the part that tends to tighten up when you do that, on this side of the spine, this is now being given a full stretch. And you can add little slumping movements and little movements, other little micro movements, as we like to say now. And all of the parts that might have tightened up during the backward bend will be stretched. How does that feel? Feels good. Excellent. And that's it. Try it. You'll like it. If you have the luxury of a second partner, you can get the world's best passive back bend by doing this. First, we'll just rehearse the same cues. Grab as much of the flesh of the arms as you can, squeeze the whole arm, and then gently lean back and pull back at the same time. And then Liv gets into the beginning of this second version by lowering her hips to the point where she has a stretch, which is about there, okay? And she gets used to that um, breathe and the other things that we did before. But for the contraction, this is the way that we're using now. Dave then steps in, and you'll see he's placing the heel of his palm over that front bone at the hip, the ASIS for the, the technical ones here. And Liv, when she presses back against his hands, she doesn't use her legs, she uses her tummy muscles only. And now, Liv, when you're ready, press back to Dave. Five, four, three, two, one, stop, relax, breathe in. And Dave follows her as she lowers her own hips down. Don't let the person stretch you, you stretch yourself. And you can always ask the person to add a bit of extra weight, of course, if you want to. How does that feel? She's nodding, that's enough, Dave. Stop there. Breathe and relax. And Liv, imagine I've got my hand on the top of your chest again. Watch this, everyone. See how the chest immediately moves? Just the thought of that cue is enough to make it effective if the person has actually had the actual experience of it. Now oh, that's excellent. Breathe and relax. Did you also notice how slowly Liv lowered her hips into that second stretch position? That's the only way to do it. Otherwise, the muscles at the back that are on the support are very likely to cramp. Now, n watch this. Dave now takes his hands away from her hips. Are oh, you going to do that as well, eh? Okay, great. In the stretch position, he's now going to move the fascia over the stomach on the left and the liver on the right and move the fascia up over the ribs. Beautiful. Feel that? and let your hips relax even further. Now this is the surprising thing. When the, fascia, when the fascia restrictions are released, and this literally is what a fascia release looks like, just a moving of that tissue over those bones, what the brain experiences is there's no restriction of the movement and all of a sudden you can stretch further. And the, the effect can be dramatic depending on where your tightnesses are. Were you going to do any other ones? Uh -huh. Can okay. you try even a bit further up, Dave? You can work a little bit higher. You have to be very careful not to push on the xiphoid, on the little bone coming out of the sternum. You don't even really need to push. You just place the thumb on the upper bit of the rectus abdominis and just let it sink. Often that can be enough. Now, the, to viewers, this will seem incredible, but when Dave placed, uh, placed his thumb there on that point, a few seconds afterwards, I felt her arm muscles relax completely and I haven't changed the amount of tension at all. It's just the body does relax under your hands, literally. Changing sides. In fact, I can increase that traction a bit now. Tell me when to stop, Liv. That's good. Okay. And that's another aspect that can't be overemphasized. You must be communicating with your partner at all times. And so if you actually have established good communication channels, it means you, the stretcher, in this image, who looks like she's being stretched, she's actually in control of the whole thing. That's critical in, a, in my view. Just finally, I can also use my hands as a tactile cue and get Olivia to try and breathe the lower portion of her ribs sideways. 
You may not be able to see that from the camera's view there, but I can see that Dave's hands are literally going apart two or perhaps even three centimetres as she breathes in and out now, whereas before those ribs weren't moving at all. That's beautiful. You've probably been in the stretch long enough, have you? Okay, so Dave, slowly take your hands away. I release the traction and the winding. Liv then reaches her hands to behind her skull. Uh, but I forgot this before. She's actually lifting her hips up to relieve the stretch before that happens. Thanks for reminding me of that. I'm getting old and forgetful. Lovely. And curl up as before. And remember, always, when you've done a strong, any kind of strong back bend, you must stretch the spine forward first. And the part of the spine to emphasize is between my fingers here, between C7 um, and the lower part of the middle back. That's beautiful. How does that feel? Mm -hmm. Also, you can induce your own little extra micro movements like this by pulling a bit harder on one arm and, or the other and letting that part relax a bit more. Because as you slump and turn, that's now stretching this side of her back more. And when she does the other side like this, that stretches this side more. And a combination of those things will feel absolutely fantastic. Passive back bending, it can't be beat. Ta-da! And I even got the old guy reference in as well. <laughs>